With this video we're going to talk about the differences between the clone stamp and the healing brush tool. Um, now how is we best to define the differences between them? Um, I try to put little characters to the um, the tools themselves to give give them sort of like an idea of what they're going to do. And I think the best way of approaching the clone stamp and healing brush is that the clone stamp is a sergeant major. It tells you what's going to happen. You are going to do it. It's very brash. It's very forceful. It will override everything. Whereas the healing brush is a lot more like a mediator. It sort of takes both sides of the um, argument and it comes up with a happy medium. So another way of looking at it is that the clone stamp is um, quite harsh and the healing brush is quite gentle. Um, and to give you an emphasis of this, I've got this picture in front of us here, courtesy of Free Digital Photos net and what I'm going to do is just show you um, what can be done by using the clone stamp and the healing brush um, and as you can see on this one we have no um, particular pitchfork and as you can see all the blemishes which are on the door have gone so on the left hand side is using the clone stamp tool and on the right hand side is using the healing brush so let's get to it let's see how this works so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, new layer and I'm going to just call this clone and I'm also going to create yet another layer and I'm going to call this heal so we can do our healing alterations and our clone alterations just to see what the differences are so I'm going to zoom in because we're going to deal with the clone area first so I'm going to select on that layer and then click on to the clone stamp tool and before I click let's just talk briefly about the options at the top first and foremost is this one here sample current and below what this basically means is where we are sitting in the clone area anything below this um, layer will be used as the clone image um, if you have got something above there which you also wanted to clone you need to make sure you change that to choose all layers or readjust your position of your of your layer itself the other thing as well off to the side as well as we have the opacity and the purpose of this is how strong do you want it to override um, the image itself also by default the brush is always set on um, by default that is um, a hardness of 0% now what that will mean is if I just um, do a very quick alteration here and I just click can you see how it's still showing almost like a ghostly image of the pitchfork let me just undo that let me change the brush hardness to a hundred percent and let's just try that again now you may be able to see straight away what it's doing can you see it's a perfect circle of destruction so if I click on that once can you see it's not blending in the colors to the edges it is just purely overriding so by and large I'm going to just undo that by and large you do not want it on a hardness of a hundred percent generally hardness of 0% is what you're after. So how do we get rid of them? Well I'm going to leave it on this level here and I'm going to alt click about well let's start here actually on the white line of the edge of the wood. Now because it's horizontal if you've got anything horizontal and vertical then this is the best option to take just get your mouse where you believe you want to start your clone stamp click once and that's it let go of the mouse don't do anything else now move your mouse over to the destination where you want it to finish up and then hold down the shift key and click and what it will do is it will draw a line of clone across that area so now I'm going to go about here holding down the alt key choose the bottom edge and then move across to about here click once hold down the shift key and I'm gonna to have to do this a couple of times click once there and click again now what you may notice is it's bringing in the shed again that's because the alt key um, the um, the target area is a little bit too far um, over so I'm just gonna tidy up a little bit now like so by clicking and then alt click once hold down the shift key and click again to to remove now rather than boring you with me doing the entire image what I'm going to do is pause the video and then we'll move on to um, the actual healing tool as well okay so as you can see what I've got then is the 
the invisible um, pitchfork now, but remember that this is all done by um, undestructive edits and it's just purely this um, layer here so I can turn it on and off again. But you may be able to notice that what we've got is a bit of shadow problem here where as you can see, you can clearly see where the actual um, pitchfork or shovel's been. And that really is a good illustration of why this is a sergeant major. It just basically takes some control and says, right, I am going to override this area with this. Now, in some cases, that's not what we want. Incidentally, to tidy that up, you may want to use the sponge tool to get rid of some of the saturation or use the burning tool to just slightly blend in so you get a bit more of the, the darker colour going across into the light. Um, over here, though, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the alternative option, which is using the healing brush. So we've got this horrible long white streak here. So I'm going to go and click on the healing brush. And I'm just going to control plus to zoom in a little. And what do we do with this? Well, I'm going to pick this area up here, hold down the Alt key and click. So I've got literally in between, as I just move over onto the padlock, you should be able to see clearly, in between the wood. And so I'm going to move down to about here. And just like what we did before, I'm going to hold down the, uh, well, click once with the mouse, and then hold down the Shift key, and then click again. So I then draw this line and as you can see how much smoother it is it's not getting rid of a lot of the um, the detail all it's doing is it's picking out the highlights and saying well they shouldn't be there and actually remove them so I'm going to now just go over to this darker bit here hold down the alt key and click and then probably change the size of the brush something a bit smaller and just very gently with the mouse drag now can you see when I'm doing it with a mouse you may be able to see a difference of color like I'm drawing it with a paintbrush. However, watch what happens when I let go. What it does is it immediately starts to blend in with the um, the rest of the image. Now, you may see these black smears. Now, the reason for that was I dragged too close to that um, black line. That's why I tend to, if you're going to have something as definite as a crack in the door, I'd be a bit more careful um, with my dragging and probably just make the brush a little bit bigger using the square brackets again. And then with the mouse, just drag downwards very gently. And then when you let go, look at that, it's starting to get rid of the rest of the um, the crack. So again, I'll just change the brush size down. Let's close square bracket and drag very gently over here. And when I let go, I'm getting rid of a lot of the the nasty, the nasty, um, horrible defects which we've got um, on this. So there you have it. What you can do then is with the, the healing brush is tidy up the image quite quickly, just purely by selecting an area of the same colour. So with that done, you can get away with a, quite a bit with the healing brush, which you can't do with the, um, the clone stamp. Let's just tidy that up a little bit. There we go. So the important thing is, let me just try and illustrate over here, is if I um, click on this darkness and then start dragging downwards, you should be able to clearly see that line I'm drawing of can you see the colour doesn't get overwritten? Whereas if I use the clone stamp and did the same thing, let's change the size of the brush down a little bit, and I alt click there and then drag with the mouse, what will happen is whatever I'm drawing there will be overwritten permanently. So it's very important to really differentiate between the two. The difference is that the clone stamp is more of a mediator. It looks at the image and it looks at what you've selected to replace that image with and then it works out the happy medium. Whereas the clone stamp tool is a lot more like a sergeant major and it will just literally do what you tell it. And so it will override and completely trundle all over your image and so you've got to be quite careful with it. So if you are going to use the clone stamp tool, what I suggest is you try it out and you'll have to undo a few times, but what you'll probably end up doing is looking at adjusting the brush so it's on a hardness of 0% and also the opacity maybe knock it down a little bit rather than leaving it full on. But at the end of the day, as long as you use layers like this, you can just very quickly turn it off and get back to the original image. So hopefully this has given you a bit of an insight into the two differences between the clone stamp tool and the healing brush. So look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.